Hey, how's it going everybody? It's the Game Economist, and today we're going to be doing a guide for the Tarith Assault Support. This is a Rarity 8 Heavy Bow Gun that drops from Kulv Tarath. So if you got one, you're lucky because, you know, it's pretty hard to get one of these. <laughs> and uh, as it turns out, as of, you know, the making of this guide, this is the best Pierce Heavy Bow Gun in the game. In fact, of any of the bow guns, you know, none of the light bow guns really compete with it. Uh, there was recently the Lunastra Monster came out, and there was a bow gun that looked like it was going to compete with it. It was the Styx Heavy Bow Gun. But after further examination, this is still the best Pierce Heavy Bowgun. So we're going to talk about how to use it, because I know some of you probably picked this up and you're really curious about it. Uh, I'm, by the end of the guide, I hope that you're able to use it proficiently. Also, I want you to be able to know when you should be using it, which is kind of a big deal with this weapon in particular. Like some of the Heavy Bowguns, I'm thinking of maybe maybe Glutton and also probably Dark Devourer. It doesn't really matter who you use those on. With this Heavy Bowgun, it really does, so you want to be able to pick out the correct targets. All right, let's get started. All right, well, as usual, let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the attributes. The attack is 270, that's better than a lot of the vanilla heavy bow guns in the game, and it's part of the reason why it became the best pierce bow gun, because it's stronger than the Legiana heavy bow gun, which was the previous best pierce bow gun. Has a starting affinity of positive 20%, that's actually good here, because the pierce ammo, uh, it benefits from having positive affinity and going for like a crit build, right? Has a deviation of none. Yeah, you know, deviation's never been the biggest deal to me, but it's actually kind of nice in this case because you're going to be standing further away from the monster to take the most advantage of the pierce ammo so having no deviation just makes it easier to aim then for custom mods i'm recommending recoil suppressor and two ranged attack up mods if you are fighting a monster that you're a little more scared of uh them actually hitting you you might want to take one recoil suppressor mod one ranged attack up mod and one shield mod just for a little extra defense but i just go with two ranged attack up mods and i roll you know at the appropriate time special ammo type is wyvern heart which you'll probably never use i never use it Okay, so we're done with those attributes. Now we move on to taking a look at the ammo. And this is really part of what makes bow guns more technical than the other weapons in the game. You kind of have to know what's going on with the ammo. You have to know how to interpret it, and that's kind of what we're going to do right now. So if you're looking at it, it, ha it holds a ton of pierce ammo level 3. Level 3 pierce ammo is the best of the pierce ammo, right? You don't want level 1, you don't want level 2, you want level 3. And if we jump over to taking a look at what kind of recoil and what kind of reload speed it has, you'll see that it has very low recoil. Just with one recoil suppressor mod, you can bring the recoil down to plus one which is perfect and then uh, for reload being normal that's actually very fast having normal re reload speed on your ammo type so right away when we look at this gun we get the immediate impression that you're meant to use the pierce ammo you could use the normal three you're only going to get three shots of it that's really not that much so i wouldn't worry about it sticky level one is meaningless uh you get recovery ammo uh, level one and level two you could use those if you want i've kind of stopped using them when i first got into heavy bow guns i used to use them more now i don't really worry about them as much what your team really needs you to do is deal a lot of damage uh, so i just focus on damage myself carries level one poison i don't really use that either you know, for the time it takes to poison a monster, the poison ammo really doesn't do that much damage over time. Like, it looks like it does until you actually add it all up and find out it's a pretty small amount. So don't worry about the poison level 1 ammo. You do get paralysis level 1 and 2, and those are actually good, especially paralysis 1. You'll notice paralysis level 1 has not as bad of recoil or reload as paralysis ammo 2, which is really bad. So I don't use the paralysis level 2 ammo. I just use the paralysis level 1 ammo. And I use that to paralyze the monster. And what's nice about having a paralyzed monster is their body becomes kind of like rigid and stiff. And you tend to get really good shots in with uh, elemental ammo as well as with pierce ammo, right? Those are the ammo types where you're trying to shoot down the length of the monster's body. So paralysis ammo being on this gun is actually very important here. It's part of the reason why it's doing such a good job. 
Also, you get level 1 sleep ammo. And then when we jump over, you'll notice it has 5 shots of the flaming ammo. We're not really interested in this. There's better options for flaming ammo. It gets 1 slicing ammo. Not really important here. It does get wyvern. That's important because you're able to put the monster to sleep and then use the wyvern ammo to wake them up. Demon, armor, trank, none of those ammos I use ever. I mean, you can if you want. I'm just, I'm not interested in them <laughs> myself, right? I just, I just focus on pumping out the damage on my own and let my teammates focus on pumping out their own damage. Okay, so basically, the, the summary we get from here is it has extremely competent pierce ammo. Even though the Lunastra Styx Heavy Bowgun comes with the free spare shot skill, Tarot the Salt Support comes with one extra bullet in the clip anyways, Fast reload speed, so it's not really important to get the spare shot on the build anyways. And then more, most importantly actually, is that it has the recoil plus one. That's extremely important because since I only had to build one recoil suppressor mod in order to get it to that point, that means I'm actually able to build the two ranged attack up mods. And this allows me to do more damage than the Lunastra Sticks Heavy Bowgun when it comes to pierce ammo. And that's why this is the best pierce heavy bowgun in the game for now. Okay, now that we've established that you're going to be using the Pierce Ammo Level 3 on this Heavy Bowgun, let's talk about how to use it most effectively. I'll begin by talking about ammo loadouts. So, when you go to your item manager and you're creating a loadout for this gun, you're going to want to bring Pierce Ammo 1 and Pierce Ammo 3 onto the build. And then you're going to bring Gunpowder Level 3 onto the build. And then you're going to edit your radial menu so that you can craft more level 3 pierce ammo as you fight. And then when you reload your gun, you'll just, you know, you'll use your radial menu to craft that ammo very quickly. This is going to be really important because in just about all cases, you're going to have to craft more pierce ammo level 3 throughout the fight in order to keep your damage up and not run out of ammo. That's because uh, the 60 shots that you can bring with you aren't enough to kill one monster. Alright, so we got that out of the way, the item management issue. Now let's talk a little bit about how to use pierce ammo. Uh, really what I want to, the idea I want to express to you guys is that there's a sweet spot that you want to keep the monster in. It's kind of this distance away from your body, right? You don't want the monster to be right up in melee range. That would be great if you were using the glutton heavy bowgun, right? Glutton heavy bowgun loves it when the monster is in melee range. For a pierce heavy bowgun, you want to keep the monster pretty far away from you. The trick is to get them far, far away, but still inside your critical distance. And I explained this in the spread uh, video. I might as well explain it here as well. Critical distance on a heavy bow gun basically describes uh, the range that the monster can be in where you're dealing optimal damage. And it's depicted by having an inner ring show up on your crosshairs, okay? So you want that to show up, and that means the monster is in your critical range and you're dealing as much damage as possible to it. But also because you've brought those ranged attack mods with you, you wanna keep the monster as far away as you can while the monster is still in your critical range, because then you're gonna get the ranged attack mods to proc as well. One of the nice things about this fighting style is the monster is far away from you, so you're not really in any danger when you're using pierce ammo. It's one of the easier ammos to use, in fact. So, just a quick summary, you're going to be bringing pierce ammo 3 and pierce ammo 1 so that you can quickly craft more pierce ammo 3. You're going to be keeping the monster in your critical distance, but at the end of your critical distance, right? You're going to be staying away from them. And then you're going to be shooting them from that good distance so that you get the ranged attack mods to activate and you're going to be aiming down the longest part of the monster's body. That's really important because pierce ammo, it continues to do damage as long as it's traveling through the monster's body. That's one of the really fun things about the pierce ammo. 
Next, I wanna talk about what monsters you really should be using Pierce Ammo on. Let me begin by saying you should never be using this ammo on Cove Terroth. So Cove Terroth has a really long body and naturally what you would think is, hey, I should use Pierce Ammo on her. But she's actually very resistant to that kind of damage. I think it's just physical damage that you're dealing with the Pierce Ammo. If you want to deal damage with a Pierce type ammo, I recommend using Thunder Ammo, okay? So don't use this, don't use this weapon on Cove Terroth. You'll be wasting your time and everyone else's. If you want to be dealing uh, a good ammo type to her is Thunder and then when she sheds her armor, there's a, a variety of options you can use on her when you're in stage four. So don't use it on her. Uh, if you want to use it, there's really just three monsters you should be most interested in using the support heavy bow gun on. So it's kind of a niche heavy bow gun, but it's very fun when you do get to use it. It's very strong against Basil Guse. Basil Guse has a very long body and two very wide wings. So no matter what angle you're shooting Basil Guse at, you almost always get a lot of damage per shot. And it's also very nice to stay away from Basil Guse. Basil Guse is deadly at close range. Then you have Uragon. Uragon, he doesn't have wide wings, but he's going to take a ton of damage from the Pierce ammo. And you can stay away from him as well and just shoot down, shoot into his face or into his tail and you're going to get lots of damage on him. And then finally, the, uh, well, you know, the last two, is, the last one's kind of like two is Black Diablos and Diablos. They're also very weak to Pierce ammo. You just shoot into any angle of their body and you have a chance for a lot of damage because similar to Basil Guse, they have long bodies and wide wings that are weak to ammo, right? So those are all, those four monsters are really good options for bringing your support heavy bowgun. Then there's options where you really don't want your support heavy bowgun. Think of like the flying wyverns, or wyverns if you pronounce it that way, like Rathalos. You don't want to use Pierce ammo on a Rathalos. His body's too small, he's got a thin tail. Here, here's an even better example, Kieran, right? Kieran's this tiny little horse. And if you shoot Kieran with your Pierce ammo, not only is it going to be deflected by his shield when he's enraged, but when he's not enraged, you're only going to get like two procs, which probably would be like 50 damage at best. So you really don't want to be using it on a monster with the small body. So once again, you'll be focusing on Basil Guse, Uragon, Black Diablos, and Diablos. For Black Diablos and Diablos, in those cases, you really will want to consider bringing a shield because they'll chase you down. So in, in that case, your mods will be one recoil suppressor, one shield, uh, you know, shield mod, and one uh, uh, ranged attack up. Okay, so that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the video when I was talking about bringing a shield. It's really for them, Black Diablos and Diablos. Okay, and moving right along, the last thing we ought to talk about is how to build for this weapon. So in my opinion, getting damage on this weapon is really important. You're going to be going for a crit damage build, and then you're going to be wanting to bring the piercing shots skill. Now, I know piercing shots is an extremely rare decoration, so I've designed this build so that players who don't have the piercing shots decoration can still use the gun really well. Uh, for the piercing shot skill, you're going to be bringing the wrath soul coil Alpha, and that's what gives you piercing shots, and oddly enough, it's the only way to get piercing shots onto a build without the decoration. Then I have Dante's Leather Boots, that's going to be giving me two ranks of weakness exploit. I have the Kazer Van Braces, Kulv Tarathas Ire, and the Nergigante Helm, all right? And you'll notice I've focused on getting attack boost. If you can get attack boost at least to four, that's gonna give you 5% more affinity, that's really good. I've maxed out maximum might, that's really important for pierced ammo. Crit boost is three, that's also pretty important. Weakness exploit, three. So basically, all of my shots are gonna come in as crit shots, right? Because I've gotten so much affinity on my build. Then the piercing shots is gonna give me a 10%, 10% more per shot. And then finally, you'll notice I actually have the guard up skill, which really you only need the guard up skill for when you're using the shield. So if you know you won't be using the shield, you can actually remove the guard up skill and bring whatever else you wanna bring. You know, it could be any number of things like agitator is a decent one, right? So that's up to you. But yeah, I would prioritize piercing shots, maximum might, crit boost, and probably weakness exploit, okay? All right, and that is my guide for the Terrath Assault Support. You know, it really does have a lot of competition between Glutton and Dark Devourer. Those are two heavy bow guns that are just killing it right now. They're really powerful. But if the uh, Capcom devs were to come in and nerf either the cluster ammo or the spread ammo, this would immediately become a much more powerful, or uh, let's say a higher ranked heavy bow gun in the heavy bow gun meta, right? So that's something to think about as well. Like if, if either the spread ammo or cluster ammo goes down the way slice ammo was nerfed, this is immediately going to become more viable in more situations. And that's one of the reasons why you'll want to familiarize yourself with it. Just keep an eye out if you collect this weapon. It's a really decent weapon.
For the tier rating, I'm going to put it into the A tier, and that's because it has too limited of use. There's only a few monsters where it's extremely effective, and then there's a lot of monsters where it's not effective at all because their bodies are too small. So in that case, it's a good weapon, it's just it's not going to break into the S tier. All right, I want to thank you all for watching. I'll have more heavy bowgun guys in the future, and I'll see you guys next time.